Okay, hello and welcome to another video. My name is Taekwisha Lachey if it's your first time here and if it's not your first time here, thank you so much for coming back. Today's video, I really still don't know the title, but essentially I love, well, okay, I love books. One of my favorite things in books that's not often there are like amazing side friendships or loves that I almost am more invested in or care about more than the main love story. Like they're either equal or I care about them a little bit more or that part of the story almost took precedence. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about side loves, which I love as much or more as the main stories loves. I don't know how that's really going to work, but hang with me here. These are the books. Okay, so if any of that interests you, then stay tuned. I have a good stack of books here and they're all pretty kind of popular there might be some that you don't know. Well, not really. I, I would say they're pretty popular. I don't think I've really gotten out of a stage of like branching and finding authors who people really don't know because I still kind of like go based off of others recommendations. And although I've read books for a while, I think I want to do a whole video on this. Like I wouldn't even say, and this is not to discourage you from watching me. I think whatever you like is valid and you know, but I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm someone who could, I find these niche great books. I'm just me and I like what I like and it's usually for the vibes and okay so let's just get into the video if that sounds interesting to you side loves and partnerships then you know stay tuned I would just like to say that I've, obviously I love love but I've always been more interested in love that is not romantic because there are so many kinds of love and so when these pop up in books it like makes me so happy because I think that most of us aspire and it's not bad, but to have the like this great romantic love, this world shattering, earth changing type of thing. And I personally gravitate towards um, friendship and familial love because there's something so special about it. Like there won't be an exchange of anything, but like just loving that other person and usually romantic, obviously there are cases where it's not, but usually romantic partially part of it is due to attraction and then obviously sex so there's something so wonderful about loving someone completely and not really expecting anything or wanting anything other than their presence in your life okay well let's get into the video the first book i'm going to talk about today is da -da -da -da, i have one two three four five six seven books to talk about oh horror crux okay the first book i'm going to talk about today is i'll go with one that made me cry i don't think i'm gonna put the clips in here i did record it but i was at a weak moment okay i love this book and i love this author it is book lovers by emily henry book lovers is a book about nora um and charlie lastra okay okay i'll probably read the back i feel like my mom expects that of me now i like doing it i personally love reading one summer two rivals a plot twist they didn't see coming Nora Stevens' life is books. She's She reads them all and she's not that type of heroine. Not the plucky one, not the laid back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister, Libby. Which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina for a month of August when Libby begs her for a sister's trip away with visions of a small town transformation for Nora who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story. But instead of picnics and meadows, a run-ins with handsome country doctors or bulging forearm bartender, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero, but as they are thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences no editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. Nora Stevens love her so much. Nora Stevens is a literary agent and Charlie Lastra is a book editor. They meet one time, instantly dislike each other, and then randomly find each other in a small town and it goes from there this is romance enough with their love the love that really got me and had me sobbing was the sisterly love between nora and libby um it's just so beautiful they i won't tell you their past but the thing is like they've become very close for a reason the city has been 
different things for both of them over time and they've always leaned on each other her sister does have a husband and children and is in fact pregnant the whole book but there's just their relationship is so beautiful and I definitely saw my little sister and I and their love which is why like she was here visiting she doesn't live in the state anymore even though we were inseparable um, like she has a kid now and she's moved to Texas so like this book literally hit me so hard like I am Nora for sure and she's like sort of Libby and um I would say she's a little different than Libby just like I'm not as I think Nora's badass I don't think I'm as cool as she is but I aspire I aspire her love is just so beautiful their connection and in this it's hard because it's sort of fractured in the whole time like as Nora's of course in this small town doing this for her sister she's trying to like find what she can fix for her little sister there's something that's clearly wrong and fractured in their relationship and she's trying to fix it there's a secret and she like is just trying to do whatever it takes to fix and heal whatever is broken for her sister and like I literally I just was crying by the end it just like and I, my sister came to visit while this while I was reading this so like when it came out and the day that I finished this was the day that she flew back home and if you read this book you would know like that was just like the worst possible thing so I just love and adore this book and I feel like for me and Emily Henry she always gives me what I need at the time that I need it and so it's just something like she actually left my sister moved to Texas when I read people meet on vacation which is why I think I loved it so much because not in a romantic way but like I feel like the way that they loved each other I didn't feel like they felt like siblings to me sorry I still love their relationship and people meet on vacation I feel like they felt like siblings but their type of love that I was like this is me my sister I think maybe at the time everything was just a reflection of me missing her this book is wonderful if you want a good book that's romance and funny and sweet and sort of like flowery poetic but also the side sisterly romance means it's beautiful um this deep connection and I freaking love it definitely recommend but the sister's love is almost as important as the main love I'll just put them back here the next book that I would love to talk about, oh, you've seen on my channel before. Um, this is Guild, book one of the Play to Prisoner series. In this book, my beautiful golden queen, Aurin, A-U-R-N. Um, I always see the subtitles when I watch these back and it irritates me that they're not saying, it doesn't say Aurin, so I spell it. Anyway, the beautiful golden Aurin is in a cage and there are a lot of people around her and reading this you feel very isolated and she has no friendships but there's definitely a person in this book who has a deep kind of love and they have a friendship sort of love together and that is commander digby and Aaron. i love their love oh wait i forgot to explain this book okay this book is played a prisoner series i'd have a whole nother video on it i love the series this is a book about a golden girl named Aaron. she lives in a golden cage in a kingdom she is Midas's golden favored pet. It is fantasy. It is really good. It's a dark adult fantasy. Just so just look up trigger warnings before reading this. I love this book. It's not to be like, I love the journey of this book. I wouldn't say read this book and think you're going to think you love it because it's just an experience. Go in for the experience and then grow into love with the next books. This is meant to be experienced, not enjoyed. I stand by that. In this book, at one point, she has to go from one kingdom to the next. It's her first time being outside in 10 years because like she literally lives in a kingdom in a cage. Midas won't let her go far because she's the only one who's gold touched. So she's his favored. And she has a commander who looks over her. Like Commander Digby has been her consistent protector and not so much friend, but like he's just not a judgmental present. That person who saw you at your lowest. Um, and later on is so proud of how far you've come and always knew that you could be that. It's, it's sort of like a fatherly, daughterly love, but I promise you it's so satisfying to read that type of um, love that they have. So this is more of like, of course there's main character loves, love it, adventure, magic, fate, but my favorite side love would definitely be Commander Dickby and Aaron. It's just beautiful and completely worth the read. Like if all of these, if I read it and that was low key, the best part of the plot, I, it would be worth reading it for me, okay? But luckily with these books so far, 
the plot more than the plus more than like good enough to read the whole thing the next book that i want to read since i guess we're just going to order is terms and conditions by lauren asher terms and conditions is the second book in a dreamland billionaire series this is a series about these billionaire brothers they all given tasks by their grandfather to get their portion of the company upon his death but all of his grandsons he felt needed to do something so he has a will they all have to finish these things if not their company will go to their father who has been an abusive horrible like thing in their lives and they refuse to let this company go to him so they all have jobs this is the second book first book is the fine print if you want very rom-com like disney if you like disney adult type vibes then this will be for you declan was my chosen i definitely felt like he would be the one that i liked the most they're beautiful it's like look at this I love whoever does her covers, like so, so thought out. Um, the first book is about Rowan, second book is Declan, but first book, Rowan has to bring something new to the park. And the second book that we're actually talking about today is Terms and Conditions. Declan's task from his grandfather was to marry and to have children. So he sets out his assistant, Iris, blah, blah, black woman from infinity to infinity. Um, and he tells her like, to bring him like she her task is to get him a wife and they work together very closely situations happen this is a marriage of convenience a grumpy sunshine yeah it's good um iris and callahan oh i'll read the back i'm sorry i forgot that one i've read the back before it really just says gold here gold there gold everywhere that's literally what the back of that one says okay it's not really giving you the synopsis of the book you really go on blind this one okay it says declan I'm destined to become the next CEO of my family's media empire. The only problem, my grandfather's inheritance clause. Fulfilling his dying wish of getting married and having an heir seemed impossible until my assistant volunteers for the job. Our marriage was supposed to be the perfect solution to my biggest problem. But the more we act in love for the public, the more unsure I feel about our contract. Caring about Iris was never part of the deal, especially not when breaking her heart is inevitable. Iris, love her. My plan to marry Declan was simple in theory. Move in together, throw a wedding, have a baby. We set rules to prevent any kind of issues, ones that were never meant to be broken, no matter how much Declan tempts me. But what happens when our fake relationship bleeds into our real one? Falling in love was never an option, at least not for me. So yeah, that's a great love story. It's fun. It's a rich guy and a black woman. Love to see it, you know. But Callahan is her best friend. Their love is so wonderful. Um, because he's constantly there to support her. If ever she says like, would you do me a favor? And he's like, for you, anything. I love these type of relationships. They're so beautiful and healthy and they're just like, make you feel warm inside. He wants nothing from her and he only wants for her to be happy. He checks his brother a bunch of times and in the third act breakup, he literally dogs his brother, but he's sweet. He's the golden retriever of the group, really. His support for her and his, pro like he's protective of her but none of it's romantic and that's why I love it so much. His third, his book is the third book and it pains me to say, but it will definitely be the best book. Because that book as well, another one that I love, the side love. The next book that I'm gonna talk about is, let me take a sip, let me take a sip. Next book that I'm talking about, I considered not putting in this video, but I just think that it's just so beautiful, so it was like worth putting in the video. Is the Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I could literally talk about this book forever. It's so beautiful. If you have daddy issues, here, here, girl, it's for you. Um, it will hurt you though. Definitely, I don't think there are really like trigger warnings, but it's gonna be sad. And this is basically, I'll read the back. Okay. Calla Fletcher, who wasn't even two when her mother took her and fled Alaska. Unable to handle the isolation of the extreme rural lifestyle, leaving behind Calla's father, Rand Fletcher, in the process. Calla never looked back, and at 26, a busy life in Toronto is all she knows. But when Calla learns that Rand's days may be numbered, she knows that it's time to make the long trip back and to the remote frontier to the town of her birth to attempt to fix their estranged relationship. She braves the roaming wildlife, the odd daylight hours, the exuberant prices, and even the occasional, dear God, outhouse. All for the chance to connect with her father, a man who despite his many faults, she can't help but care for. While she struggles to adjust to his rugged, to this rugged new environment, Jonah, the unkept, obnoxious Alaskan pilot who helps keep her father's 
charter plane company operational, can't imagine calling anywhere else home. And he's clearly waiting with one hand on the throttle to fly this city girl back to where she belongs, convinced that she's too pampered to handle the wild. Jonah's probably right, but Cal is determined to prove him wrong. As time passes, she unexpectedly finds herself forming a bond with the burly pirate. As his undercurrent of disapproval dwindles, it's replaced by friendship and perhaps something deeper, but Kala is not in Alaska to stay and Jonah will never leave. It would be foolish for her to kindle a romance, to take the same path her parents tried and failed at years ago. It's a simple truth that turns out to not be so simple after all. This book is literally so freaking beautiful. It's so tabbed up. I don't know if you can see it, but it's literally ugh, it broke me, but made me. And it's just that, like, I guess even it's even on the back this is about a daughter trying to reconnect with her father but the romance aspect is definitely there so more than Jonah and Kala it is to me about Kala and Rin and I'd like to add Kala and Simon there's something about fathers in this book that will continually pop up Simon is um Kala's stepfather and he's a therapist and he's such a kind supportive like just decent man he's the guy who will know your coffee and hear you wake up and have it downstairs for her so like there are times when you feel bad because of this ache that she has like yearning for the life that never was with her father but like Simon is also there and it's so wonderful and as for Ren I love him and as someone who hate like I don't hate forgiving as someone who has a hard time forgiving Ren is someone I felt like Kala like about this journey and literally beat her i didn't want to hear anything he had to say i was just like dude i you don't have an excuse you weren't there you didn't raise your daughter like she needed you and she wanted you and you weren't there you couldn't fly to see her and you own a charter plane but this book is so much deeper than that it's so beautiful and it's not simple just like the last line said but i love her and ren's love so much it's as much as part of the plot as anything but also simon's undercurrent but consistent dependable fatherly love that he has for her and he's never tried to take the place of anything but he's just like wonderful if ugh, i love him i love simon this is another one where the side plot loves are just as meaningful and as deep as the main plot love and i really am grateful you should definitely read the series it's ugh, i can't put into words stunning i love it entirely like literally i love it entirely there's not a bad thing i have to say about this other than that it hurt me deeply if you want to cry but also want some romance beautiful so give it a try that is the fourth book we're almost done here we have three more the next book that i'm talking about i guess i will do i'll do this next and i know that this author is going through a, a patch and i would see this a thing i would go look into it yourself because it's more important for you to form your own opinion than for me to feed you something and I don't know the whole story but I read these before all of this and I have to say that these are beautiful books the next two books are by um Taylor Jenkins Reid this is a book about a girl Daisy Jones who ends up joining a band they become world famous and then out of nowhere disappear at like really the peak or like right before the peak of their fame it is set in interview style and it's going to like follow basically like what really happened back then um, between like the fame and the drugs and romances that we did and didn't know about. Um, I'll read the back of this as well. Daisy is a girl coming of age in LA in the late 60s, sneaking into clubs on Sunset Strip, sleeping with rock stars and dreaming of singing at, a, at the Whiskey A Go Go. Her voice is getting noticed and she has the kind of heedless beauty that makes people do crazy things. Also getting noticed is The Six, a band led by brooding Billy Dune. On the eve of their first tour, his girlfriend Camilla finds out she's pregnant and with the pressure of competing fatherhood and fame, Billy goes a little wild on the road. Daisy and Billy must pass when a producer realizes that the key to supercharged success is to put the two together. What happens next will become the stuff of legend. The making of that legend is chronicled in this riveting novel written as if it were the oral history of one of the biggest bands of the 70s. Really, really, really beautiful. Like, look how I tab these. I love how I tab this. The love that I want to talk about is and Simone. Daisy and Simone met when they were very young, both before they were famous, and they instantly, like, really connect. And throughout this story, there are just times where, like, they call on each other. The relationship between Daisy and actually pretty much all the side relationships feel as important as the relationship non-relationship happening in the main story. Between Graham and Karen, that relationship is just as important to me. It broke my heart. I still miss it so much. Um, 
but the soulmate relationship was definitely between Daisy and Simone. They're soul sisters. They support each other so much. And there's a moment where Daisy calls and she's just completely like alone and the silence is literally hurting her. Like she needs noise. I think a lot was going on inside of her. So like, nope, not partying and not having the drugs and being alone, like literally hurt her. And Daisy calls Simone and there's like this beautiful line about like, you just read it it's literally so beautiful i love this book as you can tell very well loved very tapped and their love this to me soulmate love that they had was as important and to me more important because this was the love that she was allowed to have this was the love that was completely healthy and asked nothing of her and didn't hold her back but was supportive and there for her and they loved each other and were like oh, there's this moment where they're driving um and you got a friend in me comes on the radio. I believe that's what came on the radio. And they just look at each other. They mean so much to each other. And like one of them starts tearing up and the other one says me too. And I was just like, <laughs> it's beautiful. I love these types of loves. I wish more books had them because even with the, it's great to have romantic love, but like friendship, having a connection with someone, it's just so beautiful. Anyway, great book. The next book I'm gonna talk about, I guess I'll just do it, is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, also by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I will say, like, I told you to look into her, but these books as well, like, hit a certain part of me. She writes characters very well. I wish she would just do less POC things that are irritating people. Look into it yourself. Um, and, but like, these books and her people feel so human that like, they exist essentially to me. Like, I love them. And this book, this is, a, you probably heard everything about it. Reclusive Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo is ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. But when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant to write her story, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. Determined to use this opportunity to jumpstart her career, Monique listens in fascination from making her way to Los Angeles in 1950s to leaving show business in the 80s. And of course, the seven husbands along the way. Evelyn unspools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and a great forbidden love. But as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life in intersects with Monique's own in a tragic and irreversible way. It's beautiful. You probably heard about it. It's one of the most talked about books on Book Talk, and I personally really am a huge fan of this. I have seen videos talking about why they don't love it, and actually completely agree. And I could do a thing on my favorite books, and but enough with uh well it was okay that's the plot my favorite love in this story by far is definitely between evelyn and harry this is a just like soulmate love it is so beautiful and supportive so many of the best quotes i think are like about her the one where it's like you never know how long or hard you've been running until someone like oh it's beautiful it's so wonderful and it's just i love harry and evelyn's love it's just like they're always saying like me and you like they just look at it. they have each other they accepted one another they were deep friends and I think that they didn't want anything from each other and everybody else in this book including like the main romantic love wanted something that the other character like couldn't give at that time or wasn't able to and were very like angry and wanted more from them but Harry and Evelyn a limitless love and it was completely unselfish it's just two people who literally love each other like I love them and it's enough to read this book to have Harry and Evelyn's relationship for me. Last Taylor Jenkins read book. Last book that I want to talk about today is, <laughs> I love this book, but I do have complaints, but let's just get into it. This is Love In Other Words by Christina Lawrence. The only book by Christina Lauren that I love um, or truly even like. The rest of them, I was just like, sure. Tabbed up back when I used to tab all the time. Oh, so beautiful. So this book is a second chance romance. It is beautiful. I love their love. I'll read the back of this one, okay? The story of the heart can never be unwritten. Macy Sorsen is settling in into an ambitious, if emotionally tepid routine. Work hard as a new pediatrics resident, plan her wedding to an older, financially secure man, keep her head down and heart tucked away. But when she runs into Elliot Petropolis, the first and only love of her life, the careful bubble she's constructed begins to dissolve. Once upon a time, Elliot was Macy's entire world. 
throwing from her gangly bookish friend into the man who coaxed her heart open again only to break it on the very night he declared his love for her told in alternating timelines between then and now teenage elliot and macy grow from friends to so much more spending weekends and lazy summers together in a house outside san francisco devouring books sharing favorite words and talking through their growing pains and triumphs as adults they have become strangers to one another until their chance reunion Although their memories are obscured by the agony of what happened that night so many years ago. Okay, we're back. Camera storage is full. It's so full. I need to buy actual cameras just on my phone. So I had to delete some stuff. But anyway, um, I went back and I got like most of what I wanted to say about the back of this book. This is a beautiful book. And the love between Elliot and Mace is so stunning. Like I'm not usually someone who likes second chance romance. But I'm very rational when it comes to love. I will say... I'm not someone, maybe this video is sort of proof of that. I don't normally quite believe in romantic love all the way, but I definitely champion the other kinds of love, like the love of wind on a hot day and like the love of your favorite meal and kind gestures and friendship and family. It's not to say that I don't believe in real love, sort of, but anyway, Elliot and Mace's love is so beautiful. Their love, like they only, they only broke up because not even broke up there was a huge crack and a huge wrench thrown in their way and that's the only reason that they're not together i will say that that huge wrench is also the an issue for me because i feel like the authors didn't acknowledge that i think something bad really happened that night you know read the book it's so beautiful but the love that i care about is between mace and her father they had they were struck by tragedy and only had each other he got the house and i'm sorry i literally looked for the name last night and i could not find because like she clearly just calls him dad but i don't know what his name is but i love him so so much and anytime he pop up i'd just be like oh i love you like i love him he is just a wonderful father and through like raising his grieving daughter and missing the love of his life i love his love with his wife and i also love how he honors her by raising and loving his daughter as deeply as he can he doesn't try to make her any other way he's just such a supportive kind father and that love like sticks with me as much as the main love story like the way that he loves her is so beautiful he's the type of father who would do whatever it took to make his daughter happy and he's so caring and full of love and he deserves the whole world just like okay i'll read you the prologue a little bit it says my dad was a lot taller than my mother i mean a lot he was six foot five and my mom was just over five foot three danish big brazilian petite when they met she didn't speak a word of english but by the time she died when i was 10 it was almost as if they'd created their own language i remember the way he would hug her when he got home from work he would wrap his arms all the way around her shoulders press his face into her hair while his body curved over hers his arms became a set of parentheses bracketing the sweetest secret phase that was when i fell in love okay i literally put at the bottom i already love this so much it's just the way that he honored her she wrote this journal a list of rules that like he wanted she needed her daughter to be raised with you know and he never deviated from that and it's you're not gonna see an angsty and which is really appreciated i understand a lot of us don't have good relationships with our parents but sometimes it's cathartic to read a loving relationship like there's not an angsty hating my dad teen thing and there's not him being irritated by her liking this boy and there's just support and love he's just the most beautiful soul when i read this book i just kept being like i want more of him i love him and i love their love this daughter and this father for this book i will say on par or just a smidgen more because he's just the best father ever like so many things come back like even her hair you like when you read it you'll get it but there's something about his love for his daughter that is just past my heart i hope that you enjoyed today's video of the books and i hope that it came through coherent enough because again i don't really know what to call this maybe i'll look up what that word is but i also explain different kinds of love i literally couldn't think of a motherly one that fit if you have any recommendations on more things where the side love was as precedent or important to you then please let me know in the description below there's something about friendship type of love that just gets me um thank you so much for watching this video uh, wherever you are in this world i hope that you're having a wonderful day evening night and life and i'll see you in the next video bye